I don't know who enjoys it more, Yosh or Marley, but they both have an awesome time racing up and down the beach together. It's weird, there's like army people and stuff around the place. So Malaysia's borders are closed to international travellers, but you're allowed to move into province. The beds stuck here in Langkawi, uh, our plans have changed obviously, so with all the COVID pandemic restrictions, we haven't been able to cross the Indian Ocean this year. But here in Langkawi, it's quite a yachty hub and there's a lot of other boats that are stuck here that are in the exact same situation as what we are. Um, so we managed to meet quite a few yachties while we've been here. And one of them is uh, the people from White Star. They're, they're on a Passport 40, they've got a nice little boat. He's, uh, he's actually from Early Beach. He was a bare boat skipper there for 20 years. Uh, yeah, and that's where we first, that's where we bought Nanji from. So they had planned to cross the Indian Ocean just like us, but they are stuck and they're currently our neighbors. So we're having a little chat with him yesterday and he's done himself a mischief on his outboard. So I'm just gonna give him a tow into, uh, into land to see if he can go service his outboard with a fella here. He's a pretty top quality lad. He tells a good story. Knock, knock, taxi is here. So this is Jules. Morning. Morning. And this is Howie. Morning. <laughs> we actually have a few things to do today and one of those is to uh, take our swim bladder in to be replaced because it's getting pretty old and rusty and the rust is washing down the side of the boat and then it's staining our paint job. So uh, Yosh is cutting it off now. <laughs> How are you doing it? So I haven't got a hacksaw and when we, when we hit the reef, uh, my cordless grinder got soaked in water and so it's basically cactus. So I don't have any way of cutting metal. Uh, but I still have all my blades from the old hacksaw, the old, the actual saw bit. Oh my God. It's gone. I'm on to like my fourth blade because obviously I keep snapping them. But I oh know I'm like three quarters of the way through. One side or both sides? Uh, I only need to cut one side off. Oh, and I okay. Can slide it out. Yeah, good point. I'm just sick of this ladder. I'm sick of cleaning rust. Since we painted Nanji and done all those other upgrades, Nanji's a rust-free boat. And when I see a little bit of rust on Nanji, it really gets under my skin. <laughs> Yeah. And just having this and then seeing that and wiping it every two days, oh, yeah. the frustration yeah. is real. Like this is like, uh, so the paint job is like, I'm an old man with this front lawn. That's what I'm like with my paint job. Yeah, so I've just got to keep it yeah. clean. Got yeah. the old whipper snipper out. It's really hard to get off. So to get it off, you kind of have to take a little bit of paint off to, to get it off. So we don't want to do that. <laughs> yeah, just, Get rid of this ladder. This thing's so heavy anyway. It's made from like one and a half inch stainless, so it folds up. And like, so it's so heavy. Benita can't, or Benita struggles to lift it out of the water to bring it back up. So, yeah, we just make something a bit skinnier, lighter, and shinier. Yeah. So, yes, I know. This probably looks extremely pointless, and you're probably saying, why don't you just go get a hacksaw? I'm like, I could do that, which then involves a dinghy ride, a long walk, or a car ride to the hardware store to then buy a, a saw and then come back. Or I could just swear my way through cutting for 15 minutes. And, yeah, save time. <laughs> you can only use what you've got. <laughs> Welcome to Boat Life. Good morning, Mr. Marley. You look nice and relaxed. Hey. Every morning I wake up to Marley jumping on the bed and sticking his head under our sheet. <laughs> I think he gets like a cold, cold ears in the morning and um, yeah, so he, he just, he comes in our bed and, and digs himself under. We're going to do a few other things today, like the food shopping as well. So we've got our grocery bags. Yosh is just putting up a little barrier there so that Marley doesn't jump off. Like he's used to having the ladder up there. So I don't know, it's like a psychological thing. We met another yachty named Frederick and uh, he actually owns a stain like a stainless steel workshop 
yeah, it was perfect. We're gonna take this ladder to him and he's gonna make us a new one. This is the top end that goes in the water. Yeah, that's right. This is your top. This, this is the it. top. And see how we're talking about we'll make these little legs? Yeah. Recess in a nut and thread something in or... Is it going into lockdown again or something? It's, it's weird, there's like army people and stuff around the place. I don't know what's going on. Maybe because there's been a few more cases around the place, so maybe they're trying to stop. I don't. I have no idea, but it's just very weird. He's so funny, Mally. What's in here, buddy? What's in there? Where's he? Oh, you know there's a fruit somewhere. <laughs> Which one? Oh, it's in this one, isn't it? We try to always bring Marley home a treat once we've been out and he has to sniff, you know, whenever we do the shopping, he has to sniff every single little bag that comes in. He fully sticks his head in there to have a smell and see what he's got. Hey, buddy. Yeah. Nice. Which one? Which one? Which one is it? He knows he's got a treat. Um, All right, come on. Okay. Better. Good boy. We're back to the boat and now I have to wash all of the fresh produce. Um, I do this in vinegar water to get rid of any pesticides or any germs on them. And it gets rid of any bugs. Like bugs sometimes lay their eggs in like fruit and vegetables in the ends and stuff. So I always like to give them a good wash. I just use like normal white vinegar. Helping, hey buddy. So we got the new swim ladder back here. And I'm pretty happy with it. It's definitely half the weight of what the previous big thing was. But yeah, so we, I cut that off, and just so I didn't have to take the bracket off of the back of the transom there. And then so, Freddie's come up with this little design where I kind of thread this bit in, or we'll screw it out, and then screw it back in again through the bracket. That's the that's the plan behind it all. Put a safety rope on, just in case we drop the old ladder. Last thing I want to do is go swimming around for my shiny new ladder in the murky water. And just put a bit of Loctite on it. Just thread him back in again. So with the old ladder, these latches just kind of latched on top, but because it was an inch and a half, they're quite loose, so I might need to stop to squeeze these puppies in. Yeah. Might even put some padding on the inside of them so they don't rattle. It's probably a better idea. Big swim? Okay. Big swim! Go buddy! Go buddy! enjoys it more, Yosh or Marley, but they both have an awesome time racing up and down the beach together. Yeah, but when they're done, Marley just has like the biggest smile on his face and he just looks so happy. So yeah, we love it. Go. Good boy. You gotta cool down, eh? Get in there, buddy. Cool down, mate. Get in there. We had really heavy rains yesterday and we found a waterfall that we've never seen before. One of the joys of wet season is that all the waterfalls are like really flowing so we might need to go around the island and have a sus but oh, there's a bit of a freshie here. Yeah, that's so cool. It's just flowing from the side of this little um, island down into the ocean.
the most amazing thing just happened. I'm 17 weeks pregnant and I was just lying down and I thought I'll just put my hand on my belly. I've never tried to feel the baby move yet. I haven't really tried to focus on that at all. And tonight um, when I, I lied down, I turned the lights off and I put my hand on my belly and I just waited and I felt the baby kick for the first time. I wasn't sure if it was like just my stomach doing something funny, but, and then it was like, no, my stomach doesn't do these ones. So yeah, it was definitely the baby kick. And so I told Josh and then he was upstairs and he came down and- I'm like, get, yeah, show me, I yeah. want to kick. And so yeah, I put my hand on the belly and we lied there for about, what, 10 minutes, I suppose. Yeah, yeah. And then sure enough, yeah. <laughs> like, I've never felt a baby kick or like in the womb before. Like uh, many of our friends have had, had babies and stuff and you know you put your hand on their belly to try to feel the kick but you've never I've never felt it and and just to have it happen now it's like yeah it's that's pretty surreal an amazing hey? feeling yeah it's um so lovely and like reassuring and yeah, yeah. just to know that Bob's is just swimming around in we there got a swimmer. Because <laughs> we saw it on the ultrasound and it was so active it and was moving having a hell around time. and it was just doing backstroke Woo! Yeah. Kicking around having a hell of a time. Yeah. Uh, yeah, that was, and just to feel a, a kick like that, it's, it's quite early on, what, 17, 18 Seven, weeks? 17 weeks. 17 yeah. weeks. And so I think, like, that's quite early on, really. And I think it's normally about more 20 week mark, but, like, yeah, there was it was definitely a boot. We felt it twice. Yeah. So I went back for more, and I got more. Yeah. <laughs> So yeah, it's going to be nice, um, you know, just paying attention to that and feeling the baby move. Now I know what it feels like. Um, I think I'll be more, I'll yeah, be able more to, alert. yeah, more alert to it. So yeah. yeah, might keep you out. So cool. Yeah, it's like our little good night thing. Eh? Uh, yeah. 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 But we had to share that because we were feeling pretty stoked. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, All right we're night. going to bed. <laughs> So the nesting phase has officially begun. I've been cleaning out Nanji, trying to get rid of stuff, trying to make space and um, just purging everything on the boat that we don't need, we don't use. So it's been a gradual process. Every day I kind of work on a different aspect of the boat. I'm also gonna go through my clothes today and just um, put away all of my smaller clothes that I won't be wearing while I'm pregnant, like I mean high-waisted tiny denim shorts and crop tops, that sort of thing. <laughs> it's raining today so it's the perfect day to kind of potter around the boat and um, fix things up and zhuzh here and there. Just going through the bathroom and getting rid of all of our old stuff and sorting it out. It, um, it gets a bit chaotic in here sometimes because we just have these holes here where our toiletries go so they all get put in there and they get moved around and things get forgotten and lost in there. Look at that, I found some old perfume. It, this is um, Chloe perfume and look how green it's gone. This is what the salt air and salt water does to everything. <laughs> it's like, this is why we can't have nice things. We had really heavy rain last night and when I was cleaning it out, I noticed that there was some wet parts in the cupboard. So there's some kind of leak somewhere. So I'm gonna let Josh step in here and have a look and see if we've got any issues. Yeah, so it looks like the water has just come down through uh, the inside of the stanchion. I might need to replace or re-sicaflex around those bolts that are holding that stanchion through. On the inside of that stanchion is where the solar panel cables come, come down through from up on the bimini. So they run through the inside of that stanchion and then there's a through hole into here. And it looks like that's where the water's just come through. And I can see from here holes that are drilled in inside of that stanchion. So like, cause it rains so heavy, just any little bit of hole or any, any place where water can ingress, it will. And I think that's just what's happened. The water's just run down the inside. We want to get on top of it. Yeah, you want to get on top of it whenever there's any sort of water ingress, cause like on a wooden boat, water just causes rot. Um, and so you just obviously don't want that. You want to keep your boat nice and solid. So yeah, we'll have to get on top of that. Maybe smash some penetrating epoxy into it. We'll dry it all out with a, with a heat gun or something. And yeah, it's not, not that big a deal. Not too worried about it. We haven't filled up with diesel for probably Shit, I can't even remember how long it's been. It's probably been at least three, four months. And I just checked the tank there and she's getting pretty barren. Like we have we have been using the motor quite a bit, but we're not traveling large distances. So you kind of don't really think about it. And when you're only motoring for two hours, you pretty much only use four, five liters of diesel max. And so 
yeah, I just haven't been looking in the tank, but I had a check then and we probably only had, yeah, not very much. <laughs> But so uh, I rang up the Royal Lankawa Yacht Club here and asked if we could go and fill up with diesel there, but the marina doesn't have any diesel and the pumps aren't working. Now I figure that's just because of this COVID stuff and what's going on, but it's a bit weird to have the main marina here in Lankawa and doesn't have any fuel. <laughs> we are anchored here in Kua, so it's, it's definitely the closest to just skip over there to the marina. That uh, There is another marina in Talaga, which is on the, uh, on the southwest side of Langkawi, uh, it's about 10 miles away from where we are here, but there was a report that someone got diesel bug from that pump, so we don't really want to head over there and fill up with diesel bug, not with fang, but uh, in the bay here at Kua, so there's all the all the ferries that take everyone between the mainland in here and Langkawi, and they all fill up at this, there's like a barge, there used to be a little barge out there, but now it's like a ship, and I've just fanged over there because it was on the same morning as where the bars used to be and just knocked everywhere and yelled at them and people come out and said yes we can get diesel there so uh it looks a little bit sketch to tie nanji up alongside i'm a little bit scared these days rafting up nanji against things like that because we have a smicko new paint job and i'm an old man with his front lawn the way i care for the paint and so uh yeah like we've rafted up against big old barges and stuff in the Solomons and things like that, but uh, that's when we didn't have all pr pretty top sides, whereas now we've got pretty top sides. Yeah, I'm not really up for that. And so, yeah, I'm just gonna take the containers over. Hopefully they can do it. They've probably got massive nozzles to try to shove in the hole here, but as long as they fill it up on their vessel, it doesn't matter. When we put the new fuel tank in, well the old one we filled up here as well, but uh, when we put this one in, I was gonna run the line to go to the side or something, but honestly it was just too hard and it would take too much time. So we fill up on the floor of the cockpit still, so it does make it a little bit harder when you have containers like that are 30 litres you have to swing in, but uh, you know, it's a small price you gotta pay. Bit of a workout. When you when you're built like I am. <laughs> I just siphon it all across, it's so much easier than trying to funnel it. You can just go and sit down and hang out for five. So Malaysia's borders are closed to international travellers, but as currently stands with the movement control order here, you're allowed to move into province. And as here in Langkawi, uh, we have a really good doctor, but there's not great hospitals for baby deliveries. They don't actually deliver babies on the island. And so we're looking at travelling to a different province. So in Malaysia, when you travel into province, you need to clear it. You need to get a port clearance between each port. Uh, so we're just going to go into the Harbourmaster today to see what other formalities we need to go through because of COVID and travelling interstate. Uh, I'm guessing it'd be like a maritime health declaration or something and uh, maybe like a doctor's certificate. But um, yeah, we'll go into the Harbourmaster and see what they say. We've chosen an area to have our child, which is Penang. It's an island that's off the mainland, but it's got like um, big bridges that got connect to the mainland. So it's sort of joined anyway. Um, there's, <laughs> there's lots of hospitals there, great hospitals. There's also a marina there, which is near some of the hospitals. And um, it's a dog friendly marina and a dog friendly island as well. So it ticks all of the boxes for us. Um, the only problem is this marina is very busy and so so, um, it's quite small with limited spaces. Yeah, so trying to get a spot in there is being difficult. First things first, let's just go and see the big man and um, get that sorted out and just push towards leaving and everything across we get a place at this marina. So we went and saw the harbour 
Master and uh, she said that all we need to clear out of this port is our insurance papers and our normal boat papers so it's pretty similar to normal and um, immigration they just need a marine health certificate health declaration or something like that so we need to go and uh, see the doctor and get that paperwork done and um, then we can leave.